Ladies and gentlemen, ensuring that nuclear science and technology are used exclusively for peaceful purpose is a basic pillar upon which the IAEA was established more than five decades ago. A central agency function is to verify uh, that states are fully complying with their non-proliferation obligation and to confirm that nuclear material is being used for peaceful purposes. This is a contribution to achieving the goal subscribed in the title of this conference, Urgent and United Action Towards a Nuclear Weapon-Free World. My approach to nuclear verification since taking up office in December 2009 has been very straightforward. All safeguards agreements between member states and the agency and other relevant obligations such as United Nations Security Council resolutions should be implemented fully. I would like to update you briefly on a number of safeguard issues which have occupied the IAEA Board of Governors for some years. First, Iran. The agency can verify that nuclear material declared by Iran under its safeguard agreement is not being diverted. We can ensure, we can provide assurance that declared materials stay in peaceful purposes, activities. However, Iran is not providing the necessary cooperation to enable the agency to provide credible assurance about the absence of undeclared nuclear material and activities, and therefore to conclude that all nuclear material in Iran is in peaceful activities. I urge Iran to take steps towards the full implementation of all relevant obligations in order to establish international confidence in the exclusively peaceful nature of its nuclear program. In the case of Iran, Syria, the agency recently came to the conclusion that it is very likely that a building destroyed at the site called Daya Azul in 2007 was a nuclear reactor, which should have been declared to the agency. Following my latest report on this subject, the IAEA Board of Governors last month adopted the resolution finding Syria to be in non-compliance with its safeguards obligations. I continue to engage with Syria to resolve related outstanding issues. The nuclear program of Democratic People's Republic of Korea remains a matter of serious concern. As you may know, since April 2009, the agency has not been able to implement any safeguard measures in that country. Last year's report about the construction of a new uranium enrichment facility and a light water reactor in the DPLK are deeply troubling. Once again, I urge the DPLK to fully implement all the relevant resolutions of the IAEA General Conference and the Security Council. Last year, at the Nagasaki Peace Ceremony, marking the 65th anniversary of the dropping of the atomic bombs of Japan on Japan, I made my own Nagasaki commitment to work for a world free of nuclear weapons. There are four elements to that commitment. First, the IAEA can play a role in nuclear disarmament through verification. For example, helping to build confidence by verifying independently that nuclear material from dismantled weapons will not be used again for military purposes. Not long after my speech in Nagasaki, the IAEA received a request from the Russian Federation and the United States of America to undertake a verification role under their agreement concerning the management and disposition of plutonium no longer required for defense purposes. 
Second, IAEA will support the creation of new nuclear weapon-free zones and continue to help in implementing such zones. These already covered vast regions of the world. I am consulting with IAEA member states on the possibility of convening a forum on the relevance of the experience of existing nuclear weapon-free zones for the establishment of um, such a zone in the Middle East. I hope it may be possible to hold such a forum in Vienna this year. Third, the IAEA safeguards inspectors will continue to work around the globe to check that nuclear materials from civilian nuclear programs are not diverted to nuclear weapons. Fourth, IAEA security experts will redouble efforts to work with countries to help prevent nuclear materials from falling into the hands of terrorist groups. The nuclear threat does not only exist in the level of nation states, but nowadays even terrorists can develop nuclear weapons or nuclear explosive devices. I believe with all my heart and soul that nuclear weapons must be eliminated. Today, I renew my commitment to the goals I outlined in Nagasaki last year.